Welcome to another episode of The Burbs, a place where you belong. I'm Dustin. I'm Jordan. And today we're talking about something that has been in the bourbon whiskey sphere. You're a hand doctor. Conversations. Yeah. Uh, a bit lately, and that is craft distilleries. Mm -hmm. What is a craft distillery, Jordan? Um... I honestly don't know the actual definition, but if I'm thinking along the beer line, since we work with a lot of brewery clients, I would say a smaller distillery, not something like MGP. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. So, you know, the, the discussion that's happening right now that I think is fascinating is that the, the question that was posed by Bourbon Pursuit, I believe, uh, wrote an article and the, and the title of that article was, do we have a craft problem in bourbon? Right. That was the question that they were posing and trying to answer. And they, their argument, and I, and I agree with it, their, their thoughts and their argument is because it takes so long for bourbon that has to sit in barrels to mature and age, uh, it, it's a very expensive process to get started. Yeah, And so most of these places go out and they get MGP, P. P, right? Midwest. Most gangster person. Midwest grain products? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Question mark? <laughs> is it grain? Uh, what else would it be? I don't know, but I do own some stock. <laughs> and I thought it you was. You probably know that. It doesn't matter. Ingredients, I think, is the is the I. Uh, there's no I in MGP. <laughs> okay. But they are from Indiana, so maybe that's the eye. I don't know. Anyway, all I know is that that's what they go do. They go buy this bourbon that's already sort of mixed up and slooshed around in a big right. vat. And then they buy this stuff and then they put their own label on it. And they sell that for a while. And they do that so that they can get to the place where their bourbon that they actually distilled, it has sat in their barrels at least two years, three years, four years, et cetera. Um, the other problem, it, so the, the, the issue there then is you're selling a product that's not really your product. Yeah. It's someone else's mash bill. It's I mean, someone else's mixture. Everybody does that across the board, like not even in whiskey. I mean, people sell products that aren't theirs all the time. They just Sure. But, but the question is, is that an issue when then you go to drop your product that doesn't have any resemblance to the other I mean, product? It's a bait and switch, right? You've been promised, you've been giving out this one thing and then all of a sudden you switch it. And if you don't tell that story, then there is a, there's a chance of, I don't know, mishap. Well, that what if the other stuff was better before than your stuff? Yeah. Well, then you're really screwed up. <laughs> well, that's one of the problems. The other <laughs> issue is uh, that smaller distilleries don't have the budget right, well, for I mean, marketing and pushing and yeah. actually paying to be on end caps, et cetera, et cetera. And so... Whiskey is this thing of tradition, too. I mean, you pick any bottle up there and they've been around since the 1800s pre-prohibition. Well, that's like, the story. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say. But I mean, they've had centuries of brand building, per se. Yeah. Well, these are the issues that we see, you know, and and the question is, like, how do how does one overcome those? How does a small distillery or a craft distillery overcome those? One of the interesting things about craft beer is that you can turn craft beer relatively quickly. It takes a few weeks mm -hmm. to make a, a vat is of that beer. Accurate? What? Yeah. <laughs> we know that. We work with a lot of breweries. <laughs> I have no idea about the brewing process. Oh, though. sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it could take anywhere from two weeks to six weeks, right? To, to turn sure. an entire vat of that. Whereas this takes you know, two years minimum sitting in a barrel. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it depends on what they're making, obviously at the brewery, but so that's an, that, you know, that issue in and of itself is, is expensive. It takes time. Um, and so where beer could do, uh, could, could create some formulas or some recipes that are really, really interesting and new. And if it sucked, flush it and start over and they don't have to wait three more years, two, three more years. Right. Bourbon does not have that luxury. It has to sit there. So if they're going to take a big swing, craft beer has a much better chance of making it than a, a craft distillery that are taking big swings with their formulas. And so one of these distilleries is this, these little ones is journeyman heard a lot about it. Um, 
This is the Corset Whips and Whiskey. It is uh, part of our bourbon bar here. If you're a member of the Burbs, which is our club that meets a couple times a month, you can come drink this for free. Uh, do you want me to pour yours? No. Okay. I'm to take it. And this is weeded, right? I don't know. I know. I just remember I didn't like it. I liked it. I feel like I liked it when they opened it. I feel like this won awards. It did. It was a bit kind of a big deal. Um, kind of like me. And I enjoyed it when we first had it. And then I think like after it's been opened and oxygenated, it kind of changed. Did you just make that up? Oxygenate. It's well, oxygenized. I mean, Obviously, we broke the cork. Yeah. Fix your cork problem, journeyman. Wow, that's very sweet smelling. I get a lot of maple. I get wheat. I get loads of maple. I feel like there's mint in there too. I get maple. Did I say that? Yeah, a lot. It's like maple syrup. Read what it is. To the people. Journeyman Distillery is located in the 1800s corset and buggy whip factory in Three Oaks, Michigan. Once a dry town, we feel like we finally added the essential ingredients to a great party. Join us every July for our annual Corsets, Whips, and Whiskey event. That is a formal invitation. For you to smack each other with whips and drink some whiskey. This is batch 42, and this particular bottle, handwritten, is 673. Out of how many? Don't know. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna throw it back. I'm going to see what I like, if I like it. It smells sweet. Immediately get pepper on the tongue. Yeah. Whew. That is spicy. It's 59.5%, so it's 117 proof. That's why. There's a lot of oak in the finish. I feel like I get a mint that carried through the I, I get the mint, but I also get a lot of alkaline. I know I say that all the time, and it's not the right word. What's the right word? I don't it's, know. It's that very astringent alcohol taste. Okay. That's, See, when I think alkaline, I think like sucking on a battery. Well, you do that a lot, so you'd know. It does not smell like it tastes. It is not peppery on the nose at all. No. Yeah, I mean, it smells like bread. It doesn't say anywhere on here that it's weeded, but I swear it is. It, it doesn't say anything. It doesn't say if it's bourbon, if it's whiskey. <laughs> oh, it says No. And whiskey. It says corsets, whips, and whiskey. That's just what it's called. But that, is it whiskey? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, 100% wheat whiskey. Cask oh, strength. Well, there right you go. There, there you go, Bernie. It is wheat. I mean, there you go, journeyman. Maybe that should be on the front. I mean, that's pretty impressive for just wheat. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, like you, it. You get pepper, you get sweet, you get, you get the oak. I just don't like how it finishes at all. Really? I like this. It's like a hay bale. It is. You like sucking some hay bales? <laughs> is that your thing? Just shoving your face in a hay bale? No, yeah. Like a horse? It smells like wheat. <laughs> I don't like it. It's not bad. It's I don't dislike it. I would drink this. If this is the bottle we had and we went camping, just you and me, <laughs> then, I would, then I would drink it for sure because I would need it. <laughs> for the Brokeback Mountain camping that we would be doing. I love how you write these stories in your head. This is why I still have never gone camping with you. Make it it'll, uncomfortable. It'll happen. It'll happen. So the, you did mention early on that this is gluten-free. And my understanding is that any distilled product is gluten-free. Yeah. Um, it is also kosher. Celiac people. So 100% wheat whiskey. Gluten is free. gluten free and it's kosher for our Jewish brothers and sisters. There you go. Which is pretty cool. That means it's been blessed by a rabbi. <laughs> it, no, I'm not joking. That's what it means. I actually used to work for a packaged good company, and I pitched that we have that done. It smells like a. They uh, said no. Uh, St. Louis Bread Company bread bowl. Wow, you're Panera for you people out there that aren't from St. Louis. It, it does not taste like smell like that at all. It's very <laughs> sweet. I don't know what he's talking about. All right. Well, this is craft, man. And I, I, the reason I think craft is important is because I think craft folks are going to be the ones that make it's the future. 
<sighs> Sorry, guys. He's <laughs> drunk already. Um, Craft is the future. I think it's the it's the answer to some like like here's what I see the big guys doing. The big guys are doing like uh, rose casks and like they're trying to get like even fancier pinky up. And I feel like you know these craft folks are doing corsets and whips <laughs> and they're down you know they're down for whatever and i feel like the big guys have too much to lose they can't do anything too crazy although it seems like the little guys have a lot to lose yeah. too because they have to wait why change it. what's not broken uh, i mean i mean that's innovation what innovate or die that's buddy what they're saying innovate or die you'd rather die no i i i mean i like some big brand whiskey just fine. I do too. <laughs> I like it a lot. Uh, but I'm interested in, because I don't like big brand beer at all. I won't drink it. Agreed. So, and I'm not a snob. I just like what I like and it ain't that. So, all right, cool. Well, hopefully you'll pick up some journeymen. Um, this isn't the only kind they sell. There's, they have other interesting names um, as well. And uh, again, out of Michigan. So if you think the only, only, Good whiskey comes from, and bourbon comes from Kentucky. Indiana. You're wrong. Most of it comes from Indiana. <laughs> but also some comes from Michigan. So check it out. And until next time, later. <laughs>